Yo, 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 it's your main man, Kirk. Back again from the sunny central Florida. Yeah, that's right. This week, I got my bruh, Sean. <laughs> he here to drop some of that legal law knowledge on you guys. Let you know a little bit about his life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, but before I go any further, a little hustle. Yo, yo. Go on and tell him what's up. Drop that beat. I got you. I got you, Kurt. Hey, but before I drop this beat, hey, Sean. Hey, yo, what it do, little hustle? Hey, man, I want to ride that patrol car, man. <laughs> Let's get it. Let's go. All right. Drop that beat. Drop that lie. 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 All right, all right. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Hey, I got my bro here, Sean. He's going to let you know all about law enforcement. Sure. Hey, Sean, what's up, man? What's up? What's up, Kurt? What it do? Hey, chilling, man. Chilling. <laughs> Just another day, man. Another day. Hey, bruh. What's up? What got you started in law enforcement? Why Why are you so interested in law enforcement? What What excited you about it? What made you want to get into it? Drop that. I want to know, too. Man. This thing dates back all the way uh, since I was the age of maybe four or five. One day um, I was riding, yeah, I was riding uh, around with mom, you know, and I thought we were lost. And uh, it was raining and everything. We was far away from home. I didn't know we were far. I didn't know where we were, but I knew that we were far. And, um, and she told me, she said, hey, with me, you'll never be lost. So it kind of gave me some confidence because I was a little scared. And then I started seeing like the patrol cars riding past with lights on and, you know, they were going somewhere. They were going somewhere fast. Yeah. And um, I asked, I said, who is that? Like, what kind of car is that? You know, <laughs> like, because I had just started <laughs> to really realize right. um, that that was a thing, you know? Right. And so she told me that, that was a police car, those police officers. I said, okay, well, what do they do? And she just pretty much explained the job to me the best way she can. You know, you try to talk to a four or five year old, but um, she explained it to me the best way she can, and, and it made a lot of sense. And the, and the main thing that I heard was that they help people. You know, one thing I can say is um, my mother never gave me a bad perception of the police ever. True. You know what I'm saying? So um, that really helped me in, you know really deciding who I wanted to become at a young age. You can do it! So, <clears throat> I was always, you know, when we had those days in school, and they asked you, hey, what you want to be, you know, for career day, you know, you got to pick your career, I would always choose police. You know, I would always choose that that career choice, and I would always... That's what's that. Yeah, those costumes, whatever it was, I, rem I would choose that. I remember that. that. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, man. And um, so it kind of, it started there, man. And then, you know, as you know, as I grew older, um, I started doing more and more things that kind of led to uh, where I am now, you know, as far as, you know, getting into security, different mm -hmm. kinds of security. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Right. <clears throat> Sometimes it would just be in a, in like a grocery, not a grocery store, more like a, um, a store setting. Or right. it, then it led into like a, a gambling hall. Like, what was it, uh, the, the highlight? The highlight, uh, yeah. I was working in there for a little while. The Miami highlight. Uh, doing security. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and then it just got bigger and bigger. I started working in big condominiums. I got so good at it that I became a security supervisor, a sergeant, and then a lieutenant in security mm -hmm. with, wow. uh, with Kent Security at the time. And, um, you know, I just didn't want to stop there. You know, it, it just continued to grow. Uh, as you know, I went into uh, state corrections not not too long after that. Oh, um, whoa, whoa. <laughs> right. Hey, you take me so, back now. You said correction? Yeah, man. <laughs> state corrections at that time, man. Wow. And uh, I was really, really kind of driven to do it, you know? Right. Um, because I had some people that was working with me at the time doing security. 
Mm-hmm. They used to tell me all the time, man, I don't, I don't know if you can do it, man. It's going to be tough. You know, it's going to be tough. Like, you know, we tried, and, you know, you got to go through this, you got to do that, you got to do this. And I'm like, okay. You know, I'm thinking in my mind, I'm like, you know, I got a, a sibling who's actively doing it right now, you know? Right. I'm like, um, we grew up in the same house. We ate the same food. Well, I, I don't see why I can't do it. Oh, yeah? So, so yeah. Oh, yeah? So, what, what's, um, what sibling is that? Oh, man. None, none other than, than Dirty Kurt himself. You know? oh, 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 me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I got you. you I already got you. know. Right, right. You already know, man. But it's a whole, like I said, man, it's a, it's a whole story behind that. But I went into that. Right. And then, um, you know, after a while, that, that just kind <clears> of <throat> broke the ice for me. It kind of right. uh, got me to a point where I kind of got used to dealing with you know, criminals and uh, people who live that lifestyle. It kind of just got me acclimated to that to that environment. And right. from there, I grew interest into going ahead and pursuing my real dream, which was in law enforcement. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I used I used the state corrections um, as more like a stepping stone. Right. And, you know, and I'm very I'm very thankful for yourself and and uh, Michelle for also helping me to get into the state corrections field. Right. Uh, which is law so enforcement, kind of which is, which is law, law enforcement in general. Right. Right. Correct. And, um, you know, kind of, kind of, you know, giving me a heads up what they expect. Um, <clears throat> you never should, you know, never sugarcoated anything. Um, right. just giving me a heads up on what they expect and, uh, you know, just really telling me, Hey, you know, <laughs> this, this, this is how the job is. You know what I'm saying? If you want to do it, you know, I'm gonna help you. And I appreciated that, um, to this day. Um, no problem. No or, problem. Or get me started in that, most definitely. True. And so, like I said, that was more like a stepping stone. Uh, later on, I applied with the Atlanta Police Department. I chose to, to do Atlanta because I wanted to experience um, some time outside of Florida. I what? wanted to go somewhere different, and I chose nowhere better than a predominantly black city. To go work for, which is Atlanta, which is a great city. Oh, yeah. city. Um, a lot of, lot of opportunities out there. Yeah. Um, and the, the part that I liked the most was that, like I said, it's, it's chocolate city. You know, yeah. everybody there, African American, uh, African African Americans are really the people who are who had the highest positions. You know, mayor. Um, at the time, fire respect, chief. Respect. Uh, so it was really inspirational, you know right, what I'm saying, being right, in that area. Right. Um, so I really enjoyed my time there. It was a great place. Um, left there with a great rapport with uh, all of the supervisors, sergeants, lieutenants, um, <clears throat> captains, everybody up the chain. Um, salute, and I know salute. I, if I wanted to, absolutely, if I wanted to, I know I can go to, I can go back there at any time. That's how good my rapport is. Um, but however, um, parents getting older, um, family members getting older, everybody needs assistance. I decided, hey, you know what? I need to come back and be closer to family just in case anything happened. And that's the reason why I, I am where I am now, currently with Brown Sheriff's Office. Um, and yeah, like, man, I'm still here. I'm currently right now, like I said, I work in the capacity of, of jail and uh, law enforcement. Because I still have uh, arrest powers, I make arrests, I do those things. Um, but I am soon just going to be strictly nine one one again. You know what I'm saying? Nothing but uh, DLE, which is Department of Law Enforcement, which is strictly nine one one calls. I am yeah. soon possibly going to go back to doing that as well. So it's just up in the air right now for me I'm a, I want to ask you something why do you why do you necessarily want to go back into back out in the field like patrolling as a police officer what interests you why do why you don't want to stay inside the prison man I'm, I'm I'm mobile I'm used to moving around um don't get it don't get it wrong uh working inside of jail and things of that nature you still helping people which is predominantly my main thing Right. Um, you know, you still get a chance to help people, help rehabilitate people. But I feel like I, I can do more out in the community. You know, more right. out. You know, I can reach. I can reach the people who I want to reach. Right. More importantly, the kids. Sure. And um, to stop to stop it before it gets to that point. 
right. to where I have to talk to them behind the bars, behind doors. Right. You know, uh, so I think that that definitely uh, needs to be the focus for not just me, but all law enforcement in general. Um, and for the most part, like I said, I know some really good people, some really great people that that is their focus. And uh, we all share the same that same dream. <clears throat> wow. And are you going to still continue to stay in the South Florida area? Yes, um, I do plan on staying, you know, in the South Florida area. Um, majority of my family is here. Uh, so, you know, this is where I'm born and raised. So, yeah, I, I do. I might buy land in other places um, in vacation there, but this is predominantly where I want to go ahead and stay. True, true. Hey, also, man, shout out the Broward County Sheriff Office. Shout out, man. Shout out to all the sheriff officers in South Florida, man. We appreciate everything you guys do in the correctional facilities and out in the field, you know? Because it's about I agree. the people. And we thank you guys. We salute you guys for protecting us and keeping us safe, keeping the streets safe and the inside safe. Really appreciate that. Absolutely, man. Appreciate you. So... Sean, before we wrap this up, what are your goals? Like, I know you say you want to go to the streets eventually to get back into patrolling. Um, what's the end goal for you with this, with law enforcement? Um, the end goal for me, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, will be, you know, moving up in rank if I can. I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, move up in rank. Mm -hmm. uh, but mostly... It's more about just doing something um, for the community. So I eventually want to build such a, a, a big enough rapport with the community that I can make like uh, little centers, you know, community outreach programs, anything that I can kind of do to bridge the kids in uh, with law enforcement, yeah. uh, community oriented policing type uh uh, venues, you know, things of that nature. I want to, I want to kind of get that facilitated, get that going. Um, it's almost like a police explore type of program, but just more so continuing to, uh, grow that relationship between, you know, the community and the, the, the kids in that community. Yes. Yeah, so and, uh, and the law enforcement. The bridging the gap. So I want bridging that gap. I want to create like a program of some sort that, will facilitate that type of thing. Now, um, I remember back in the days, like police officers used to just do it naturally. They used to just like, they'll stop, say, hey, what's going on? You guys, you, they'll come out, throw the football with you. If you were like far away from the house, they'll, hey, jump in the car, we'll drive you home. It was more of a connection with the city. Right. If that's what your program is going to be about? Absolutely. Um, wow. Absolutely, man. Just, that's incredible. Just having... Man. That's allowing awesome. them to to see that that law enforcement officers are human, you know what I'm saying, and that they do have hearts, you know. Honest, obviously, you know, we've had, you know, you have some people who don't do the right thing, right, um, in law enforcement, but you know, that's that's life, you know. Right. It's, it's bad law enforcement officers just just as well as it's bad people. That's so true. So you can't, um, we 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 can't necessarily identify who those. Um, bad officers are right away because we don't know they they, they don't show you know so right. you, you really don't know most of the time until something happens and then it's like wow okay couldn't believe that but it's, it's the same way you know sibling you can have a sibling a cousin you know you thinking that everything's all good because right. from what they show you is, is good but you just never know what they into so um it's the same way no but, like was, i want to ask, ask you another question now this is just me this is my thoughts right mm -hmm. i always felt that officers should patrol the areas that they grow up in like if i came up in miami liberty city and i was an officer i should patrol those particular areas if i came up in mm -hmm. let's say a western florida or a hialeah or a, um a kindle depends on the area wherever you're from those officers right. should this is just me like i said it's my opinion i feel okay, like okay. those officers patrol those areas and the reason why i said that is because 
I feel like there's more of a connection, meaning, you know, the lingo, you know, the body language, you know how that neighborhood is. You know how to like, you may know Miss Brenda down the street. You may know the little kids that run up and down because you were the older person then. And now those kids are becoming teenagers and stuff like that. And there's a certain type of body language, like when, or hand gestures that certain neighborhoods or characteristics of certain people may use. A lot of people like maybe like blacks and Hispanics like to use their hands a lot when they talk. But if I'm from a different right. area, like, I don't know it. I'm moving from Wisconsin or Kansas or somewhere like that. And I'm coming to Miami and I'm, oh, what's going on? I want to be a, a officer. And now I'm in that area and I'm seeing these hand gestures or these quick movements. I may feel intimidated as an officer because I'm not used to the way people move and talk. But if you're from that area or even close to that area, you're familiar with the people. Does How does that thing? How do you feel about that? Um, I definitely think that's true, man. Is it, I definitely feel as if that's that's very true, man. Um, the issue, the issue that the only issue is that you know, say for instance, coming in from a, a, a rough area like Liberty City, right. um, the problem is we don't have enough people from that area actually applying. Right. Everybody, everybody wants to, um, you know, pass criticism or constructive criticism, any kind of criticism. They want to criticize uh, the police, but nobody wants to do that job. That's right. the thing. Right. Nobody, nobody signing up. You get what I'm saying? So right. um, that's the that's the issue. You know, everybody want, wants to see things better, but they don't want to actually get their hands in it to make it better. Well, what so, about what um, about if they do the like the neighboring um, officers in other neighboring neighborhoods? Like, say, for instance, if you're from Liberty City, but the officer says, say he came up in um, where um, North Miami or Fort Lauderdale. You may not be from that immediate area, but you're in the vicinity. Right. You know, you you kind of still right. know the people, the the area, the the lingo. You get I what I'm saying? Should, yeah, I think they definitely should get preference because right. you know, like like you said, they know the area, they know the people. Right. Um. And and sometimes um, that actually helps because people can tell when you when you're familiar with the area, when you when you're from where they're from, or uh, if you kind of grew up under that same kind of you know, background and stuff. They can kind of, they can feel it. So right. it definitely does help because, you know, the way you communicate with people is the whole job. That's, 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 that's the biggest part of your job as law enforcement is communication. Right. And, uh, and if you can't communicate effectively, um, then you, you, you're not gonna, you're not gonna have a good day. You're not gonna do the job successfully. So, I think that yeah, we would have better communication if we're if you're from that area, you will have better communication with people in that area or in an area very similar to it. Um and like you said, we you know, I'm I'm from Liberty City area as well. You know what I'm saying? I I grew up in the Liberty City area as well. Yeah. So I would definitely, you know, recognize uh things before somebody who's probably not uh familiar with that area or familiar with the people in that area um, because I grew up over there because I know um, and I know the majority of the people in that area so right. um, I definitely understand where you're coming from with that you know okay. um, and it's just making the people feel comfortable as well you know right. what I'm saying especially right. when they know you if they know hey you know you, you from over here so I feel comfortable with that I could talk to you you know what I'm going through you know exactly. it, it's just being able to relate you know um, that they, you know, that's what makes people feel comfortable. Huh. That's so true. So, so true. Man. So, I want to know one thing. I want to know, um, what would you tell that little kid that's six or seven, maybe even eight, they're thinking about, oh, wow, they, they remember you at that age playing with your little police car okay. and you're seeing the lights go by. And what would you tell that little kid who's probably leaning towards maybe looking into going into law enforcement as they get older? What would you tell them? Yeah, what's up? Look at Just follow your heart. If, if, it's, if it's what you feel, it's what you want to do, you truly love it, follow your heart. And, and absolutely, 
if you do nothing else, continue to learn about the job as you grow as you grow up. Continue to learn more and more about the job. Right. Continue to yeah hold that passion. You right. know, study it, study it in advance. Okay. Um, pre- prepare yourself early. Uh, go get into the, the the programs, the police explorers. Ride, do the ride alongs. Do everything. Yes. Sir. Right. Enjoy the full experience before you become of age to actually apply. But always, always, always follow your dreams. Okay. Do what you have to do, and anything is possible. Come on now. Okay, thank you. That was awesome. That right there was totally awesome. Hey, Sean, I, I'm sorry, man. I just forgot this part right here. But who inspired you? Who okay. inspired you to be the person that you are? Yeah, I want to know. <laughs> well, man, I'm going to be honest with you, man. That is not a one person, just a single person that inspired me. This actually came from the whole family in, in many different ways, but I'm going to deal with my immediate family in specific. Okay. Um, each, Both of my parents, as, as well as my brothers and sister, all were inspirational in me becoming who I am today. And I honestly have to acknowledge the, a big chunk, a big foundation um, in that. And that's my mother, man. Uh, she Ooh. actually, mm-hmm. that is the biggest chunk of everything because that's where my character comes from as far as that, that desire to want to to help people. You know, as, as you know, and the, the rest of the family right. know, she was always the person that wanted to help everybody. That's true. No matter what, she 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 give a blast to help everybody. Mm-hmm. And so that was that was a big inspiration all by itself because mm-hmm. I'm like, I want to help everybody too. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I kind of grew up with that feeling, you know. Um, and she was always she always had courage. Like she was she was very man. It wasn't nothing that she was. She wasn't scared of anything. She's the strongest person. She had courage. Know. And that's another big part of my character, you know, that she really instilled in me. Um, so, like I said, um, that's where it started. Um, my dad, another very big, big part of it, because he would always, um, every day, drop me off to school, and as well as other siblings as well. Um, but drop me off to school, he would always say, "Hey, you know, get that education. You know, what I'm saying, make today, <laughs> make today better than yesterday. You know." Make a positive impact. Right. Go in there and learn something today. Right. He always he always reinforced. So you you can never forget. Hmm. Today I gotta I gotta learn something different today because he would he wouldn't let you forget that. That's true. Um, That's so true. Okay. And yeah, he would he would he would take time. He studied with us um, whenever he can. He definitely studied with us every Sunday after breakfast, as you know. Hmm. Um, yep. Thanks. And and uh, okay. yeah, so he was he was on top of it. You know what I'm saying? He he, he didn't he didn't leave room for error. Right. Um, and not only that, but also he he helped get my first jobs. You know, my first job, summer jobs, mm. always kind of taught me to be independent. Right. Um. You know, anything you you want, he didn't just give it to me. You know what I'm saying? He kind of um made me earn it. Right. Like you know what? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you. I'm not gonna give you what you want. I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you get a job so you can earn your own money. Thanks. And so, um, right. so he kind of instilled that in me, and I'm very grateful for that. Very grateful. I agree. Um, going to the older sibling yourself, you know, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and include uh, Michelle into this because uh, you guys like uh, combined um, was very inspirational. The field that I was looking forward to going into. And everything. Not only did you guys start it and fast track it, but you all were doing it in living color, which which um, was inspirational to me because I felt like you know, well, these people that I'm I'm, I'm very close to, you know, I'm around right. all the time, and they're doing it. Right. And if they can do it, I know I can. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And um, and so that was very inspirational and all on its own. You know, I, I've watched um. I've seen you go out there and, you know, went to the military. You know, you kind of branched out. That's what kind of let me know that, hey, if he, he can leave and, and go in the military and fly all around the world, I can go to Georgia. You know? So, right, right. Um, 
Yeah, so that was that was inspirational for me as well. So I definitely appreciate you all for that. Um, no problem, James. Um, oh man, uh, James, my brother James. Mm-hmm. He, man, what do I? What I mean, he did a lot. You know, um, he. I learned how to fish from him. <laughs> I learned how, uh, yeah, the, the the basics when when it first came to me play fighting. You know, just kind of learn how to defend myself. You know, he was he was helping with that. You know, right. Um, man, I learned how to uh, ride a bike. I learned wow. how to drive a car. Wow. You know, um, he was first, first. Yeah, he let me drive his car. First car I ever got behind the wheel. I mean, he taught me how to shoot. I mean. Okay, this, was, okay. this was this is a big 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 um that was a big chunk. That's a big, <laughs> that that was is a big chunk, chunk as well, man. That is That's a, a huge chunk. chunk, man. And um and you know that that will forever be appreciated as well. You know? No you, you doubt. can't you can't Yeah, man, you can't you can't replace that. Big um bro, big bro. <laughs> my brother uh Tony. Tony Tony What I will say is Tony got me started out with my love, my passion for electronics. He would um, take me on the weekends. Sometimes with him, we'd go around the corner, walk with him, around the corner to the flea markets. And, um, okay. you know, we didn't have much money. You know what I'm saying? But little right. quarters that he did have, he was slipping in the machine, let me play the games. He teach me how to play them. You know what I'm saying? And it kind of <laughs> it kind of grew my love for the electronics. You know what I'm saying? He, he right. always been into games. Right. So it kind of it, it grew my passion for the electronics, and I appreciate him for that. You know, because to this day, I'm very big on video gaming. Now, to this day, because of uh, what he started me out with back then. That's so I appreciate up. that. That's what's up. Um, My sister, you know, and she was, she's the closest to me in age. Take so care. she was always right. um, like a protector, a defender. You know what I'm saying? Um, right. She didn't let no harm come your way. You know what I'm saying? Take and care. she kind of. Really, really, I mean, she really taught me how to, you know, stand up for myself. You know, like, hey, like, if you feel like, if you feel like something is wrong, say something. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> you know, like, she she was always that person. She was very influential. Um, I watched her do a lot of things um, growing up from being in, the, even starting off when she was in a band. That kind of influenced me to want to get into activities in school, watching her in a band going up. The games on Friday nights. The she's in the stands playing playing her instrument and stuff. And I was like, man, I want, yeah, I wanted that kind of attention too that she was getting. You know I what I'm saying? So I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and yep. then she grew to the nursing uh, field, the nursing lifestyle. I watched the study. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and uh, she took it very seriously, man. She closed that door, locked it. You can't even get in there. I tried to slip in there with a butter knife. Couldn't get in there. You know, um, totally, totally committed. <laughs> She was totally committed. Yeah, totally committed, man. Hard uh-huh. work, hard worker. You know what I'm saying? Um, so she was just very inspirational in a lot of different ways herself, man. I'm very appreciative. Awesome, uh, appreciative man. for her, man, for that. So, man, everybody, awesome. as you can see, everybody really, really, really uh, inspired me, man. The whole family. Wow. Not to include, you know, and, and I know I'm leaving out a bunch when it comes to uh, uncles and aunts. There's so many ways that they inspire me and I even got one still inspire me to this day. Right. Um Uncle Tom, you know, with him every single day. He drops so much knowledge on me on a regular basis. True. Um, it's not even funny. Um, you know, so yeah man. <laughs> I, I had inspiration <laughs> from everywhere. That's awesome, man. That is awesome. That was totally awesome. I love yeah. it. Hey. Absolutely. So, you want to end it? Nah, come on, man. On something, son? You want to let everybody know something before you we end this episode? Yeah. Man, I just want everybody to know, man, you know, shout out to uh, Tony's uh, gaming channel, man. I know that he's out there doing his thing, Miami Gaming Retro and Beyond, uh, the family channel, channel uh, Trembles uh, family. Uh, life is good, you know. Shout out to what they got going on, um, you know. Shout out to 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 your podcast, man. This is going great uh, about that life podcast, man. You guys are doing amazing, man. On this YouTube, um, and just you know, continue to do what y'all doing, man. 
We love it. We appreciate it. And uh, we appreciate you. Yeah, bro. man. Y'all stay blessed, man. Everybody. <laughs> no doubt. We appreciate you too, bro. Okay, I just said. Hey. That, but that's it for this episode, everybody. Yo, uh, I'm Kurt from About That Life Radio. I'm that was my baby, bruh, Sean, Trimble, Yo, law enforcement, <laughs> correction, Thanks, the whole works. Hey, we out. <laughs> Lil Hustle. Yo. Drop that beat. I got you, I got you. Hey, before I drop this beat, hey, Sean. What's up? What's up, Lil Hustle? Hey, I know you thought I forgot. I want to ride in that police car, and I want to play with them sirens, man. Let's get it, man. Let's go cold three. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, hey, Sean, we going to say it on the count Yo. of three. One, One two, two, three. three. Drop that B. Drop that loud, that loud. Drop that loud, that loud. HustleSocietyENT.com What are you waiting for? Come on! By purchasing our products at HustleSocietyENT.com You're helping our channel grow and do bigger and better things. Thank you for listening.